Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are doing some moonscape with the Canon 90D and the great 7200 Mark II f2.8. The thing is an absolute power horse. I will never stop saying that. It's a beautiful thing. The moon, it's a full moon tonight. Uh, it's already risen, but we're gonna try and catch a time lapse of it going over that beautiful castle behind me. So, uh, should be a good one. Okay, so I am now roughly set up in the right position. Uh, we're starting a little overexposed, so if you look at the screen here, it's completely blown out. But as the sun goes down, it should start looking better and better. The moon is currently over there and it's going to arch upwards according to photopills, which is kind of the wrong way, but it's a full moon and we can't miss a full moon. Um, I'm also using my intervalometer today, so I don't have to touch my camera. It's going to set up the time lapse for me, and hopefully, I can catch the moon going from the left side of the screen, arching, going up behind the castle. I'm at 70 mil today, not 200, so I'm hoping that the moon will be big enough to notice, but not so. But it's not so zoomed in where I'm staring at the at the castle walls. Moment here. Let's take the first photo. There's 400 images I'll be taking for the first set, divided into 24 frames per second, which brings us to a total of 16.6 seconds of a time lapse. But we can double this up to 800 photos if we wanted to, as uh, so we bring us up to a 30 second time lapse. But what we can do as well is if the moon moves too slow across it, we can increase the frame rates to something like 50 frames, which will half the total time that the moon moves across the screen. So which is probably what we'll end up doing. Another thing to note is that at the start, I did say that we would overexpose the screen and for this very reason, during golden hour into civil twilight, what we call the blue hour, the light changes so drastically. With time lapses, if, if you don't have decent software to go with it, it's just going to be one lighting situation. So it's good to overexpose the start and underexpose the end. So you've got a nice middle bit where your framing really comes into action. Let's go over here and take a look at Mike. What are we setting up at? Mm -hmm. oh, hang on, I hit the wrong button. I got a few stack balls. Nice, nice colours. Be better if it was cannon. <laughs> nah. Better if it was cannon. He's a he's another Sony user. It's gonna stay over there. It's gonna stay all the way over there. This is the this is the cannon area. You stay over there with your Sony. Uh, Sony users, don't come for me in my comments, please. Okay, so we have 169 photos remaining. It's cold. It's very cold. It's, I'm estimating it to be either one degree or just on freezing. I have 163 images left. It's too dark on the screen for me to see anything except the moon. Uh, so I might do the exposure for it, the whole edit. I'll expose for one of the middle parts of the sequence and you should see the time lapse coming up now. Hey guys, I hope you liked that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I hope you learned something about time lapses today. I'm gonna to try and put in some little calculations in the corner. You've probably seen it in a video. If I did, if I haven't, I'm sorry. I'll leave a link to a, a video that describes time lapse in a little bit better than I probably could. And I'll see you on the next adventure.